are 60 million people who suffer annually from chronic GI conditions and yet there are only 15,400 board certified gastroenterologists in the entire United States. People wait months to see a specialist. And from our research with a survey of over 4,000 chronic ga gastro sufferers, 73% never make it to a gastroenterologist. Jeff Glick, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation for Startup Health TV. Great to be here, Logan. So I'm really excited to hear about what you're building with Salvo Health. You've made some great headlines recently, um, but I want to start by understanding you and your journey because I think it's somewhat interesting and our audience will be curious to hear about it. You know, you're known as the former CEO of Foursquare. Uh, and now you're leading the charge with this healthcare startup that's targeting gut health. And so I want to hear about that that journey and kind of how you got from point A to point B. Well, I've been an entrepreneur for over two decades um, in travel as co-founder of a travel startup, CMO of Travelocity and CEO of Foursquare. And I've been part of digitizing legacy offline industries many times, uh, mm. whether it's travel or the retail sector with Foursquare and with two co-founders, uh, Avi Dorfman and Jason Finger, we got together about a year ago intent on bringing that entrepreneurial spirit to the healthcare industry. And the startup health community had been through Steve Krein and Unity and others encouraging um, more entrepreneurs to come into the healthcare sector. Um, and the, the, the kind of skills about bringing a patient or a user orientation about technology that can scale um, about focus on bringing better experiences that include both technology and, and human judgment. All of those skills from outside healthcare, uh, the startup health community kept saying to me over the years, um, you're welcome to, to come in as an innovator into, yeah. into healthcare, which can be daunting as someone new to healthcare. And so the startup health community was part of encouraging me. and. You'll hear more about it, but this is really a mission-driven project um, of the heart uh, to do something really special, uh, and so uh, that's that's what brought us to this to this journey. Yeah. Well, I want to hear more about sort of why gut health in particular and the challenges inherent to just the, the GI clinical landscape. But I love that you you mentioned that you your work at Travelocity because. Um, so many times I've had sort of vague conversations with folks about, hey, if we can, if we can revolutionize the travel industry, then you know why is healthcare so far behind? And here right. you've been, you've done that actual workflow of like you know really upending a legacy system, and it's not uh, abstract for you, right? When I started my first travel startup in 1999, called Site 59 about 10% of travel transactions in the US uh, happened online, including both you know, hotels and uh, airline sites and online travel agencies like an Expedia or Travelocity. By the time I left the industry nine years later, um, it was approaching 80% of transactions wow. Wow. were happening digitally and online. And so I've, I've lived that incredible scale up. and. This was an industry like healthcare, I think, where people relied a lot on trust. And so one of the, the keys to digitizing that, that I was focused on was humanizing technology. Uh, and I think that's something you'll see in, in Salvo as well. So when I became chief marketing officer of Travelocity, I introduced uh, the roaming gnome. <laughs> which uh, was a kidnapped lawn ornament and people would say, well, why do you want to spend $100 million a year on a, you know, a garden gnome that's been kidnapped and traveling the world? But part, it was strategic to try to bring a personality and a humanity to, to these software tools that people were just beginning to learn. And one of the things we rolled out was something called the Travel City Guarantee that came out of listening to people who would frequently look up the price of a flight or a hotel room, um, but then they would call a travel agent or they would call the hotel and they were afraid to book online. 
And as we spent a lot of time with user research, we heard people saying, you know, I, I want to talk to someone because if there's a problem, I want to know that there's someone standing behind it. Travelocity at the time had 5,000 customer service agents that were helping travelers all day long, but but Amazon, and at the time, Travelocity was actually bigger than Amazon. Um, and Amazon had set the model by hiding the phone number. You know, there was no way to, to get customer service. And so we tried to do something very strategic, was, was put our phone number and say, call us anytime and we will, we will be responsible. We will fix it. Yeah. Um, if something goes wrong, that was the travel seat guarantee. And, uh, you know, everyone said it was a category entirely defined by price shopping. And yet Travelocity, after we launched the GNOME and the travel seat guarantee began to grow, um, at 30% when Expedient Orbits, our nearest competitor, were growing more at 15% quarter on quarter. And so, it really proved that you can zig when others are zagging, um, that you can differentiate on humanity combined with technology. And I think that's actually a theme that you'll see very true to, to Salvo Health's DNA as well. Okay, it's a good segue. What is Salvo Health? So Salvo Health is uh, a world-class specialty clinic in an app, uh, in this case focused on the 60 million Americans who suffer from gut challenges, chronic GI issues, IBS, GERD, celiac, dyspepsia, and SIBO and other similar conditions. There are 60 million people who suffer annually from chronic GI conditions, and yet there are only 15,400 board certified gastroenterologists in the entire United States. And remember that same 15,000 set of board certified doctors also has to do all the colon cancer screenings and colonoscopies and endoscopies in the country on healthy people. Hold on, so just to, to, to not force that. people to do the math, uh, what does that mean in terms of real world delays or lack of care? So, so what happens uh, in the U.S., and this is emblematic of a lot of uh, chronic conditions, is that um, people wait months to see a specialist. And from our research with a survey of over 4,000 chronic ga uh, gastro sufferers, 73% never make it to a gastroenterologist. Um, and, and so there's a real shortage, and that means particularly if you live outside of a place like New York City, there are a lot of medical deserts where uh, smaller towns or rural areas uh, where you might wait months to get an appointment. And, and even beyond that, more importantly, chronic conditions don't have an easy on-off switch. So it, the current U.S. healthcare system is not well set up to deal with chronic conditions. It's very advanced for an acute condition. But but these chronic conditions like, like IBS don't lend themselves well to a 10 minute appointment and then a pamphlet and we'll see you in six months, good luck. Um, they, these people need daily support and they need a comprehensive approach. And so Salvo Health um, was born, I think, as part of this next generation of telehealth after the pandemic, you saw a lot of early telehealth that was closer to what I call transactional medicine. And so that might be a, a doctor on demand for an urgent care visit, but you're, you're likely never to see that doctor again or be able to have follow-up questions. And, uh, and then you're also, um, you know, you see a lot of what I think of as, as transactional medicine uh, online. So it's closer to e-commerce than real medical care. You, you might see uh, a websites providing hair loss medications or ED drugs or the like. The Salva Health, what we're really trying to do is world-class, um, non-acute, chronic care. And we're looking at everything from labs to lifestyle, from microbiome science to cognitive behavioral therapy and gut brain exercises and elimination diets and all of these sophisticated programs. And we really believe that a comprehensive approach with a daily medical care plan supervised by a doctor with proper advanced diagnostics is the way to really help people and make them feel heard and get their symptoms under control. And the ultimate goal, Logan, is to restore a sense of trust in their own bodies mm. that they've lost through chronic 
chronic symptoms. Um, 93% of the people in our surveys say that their chronic gut conditions affect them every day in other parts of their life. So yeah. the biggest category is mental health and anxiety, but it could keep them from going on a date or a business dinner or seeing their kids recital. Um, it it just affects every part of their life uh, and the uncertainty and anxiety that comes with needing to, to be near a bathroom at all times yeah. and unsure what will happen next. These are very stressful chronic diseases. And the U.S. healthcare system is much better set up to deal with acute than these kind of ongoing complex medical, uh, complex situations. I think that's such an interesting point. Um, and, it, you know, gut health is just the, is just this top level descriptor for what is one of the best sort of um, examples of daily chronic care needs that you can really find in the world, right? So it's like, it's really not, I mean, you described this a second ago, it's really not, uh, regi- you know, it's not um, one specific sector, it's really understanding what is chronic care, what does chronic care look like when you need to be in touch with your health care on a almost hour by hour basis, right? Like, what other types of care um, also benefit from this level of, of touch point uh, with your provider, this level of knowledge of your own body. So it feels like you're opening the door to just a new type of digital care. Salvo Health uh, is beginning with gastroenterology, but our vision is to bring this new kind of care that we call whole self science to a number of subspecialties over the years to come. And it is that continuous intervention, it is that comprehensive approach, it's working with unlimited um, messaging with your dedicated doctor, trying diverse strategies and a team of experts, uh, and doing it all affordably um, through technology, particularly app-based communication. Now, you just made headlines just recently, just this month, about your $10.5 million seed raise, uh, which is exciting. Congratulations. And um, kind of coincided with you coming more public with the company, uh, which is an awesome way to announce what you're doing. Um, What are you hoping to accomplish with that seed? And kind of what does the next uh, six to 12 months look like because of that? So it was an exciting week because we announced the $10.5 million seed, and we also announced that we are live uh, serving most of the U.S. population, accepting members in um, states that cover most of the U.S. population as of this week. So it's, a, it's an exciting time here at Salvo. We've been working for a year, um, relatively in stealth, to, to deal with how do you orchestrate all of these pieces, the, the doctors, the health coaches, the registered dietitians, the gut-directed psychotherapy experts, and then bring that all, including proper triage and diagnostics, in, into an app, um, and, uh, and in the process make it deeply empathetic for the millions of people who um, haven't found great solutions yet. For, for conditions like IBS or GERD. So that's, that's an exciting time. And we have, you know, announced this incredible set of investors who I'm learning from, who are healthcare experts, and this amazing clinical advisory board that we brought together for the first time of renowned uh, physicians and researchers and experts from fields that don't often come together. And so we can talk more about that, but it's an exciting week to announce all that. You mentioned creating a platform that's deeply empathetic. And you said, you know, at Travelocity, you tried this, try to bring in the human touch. Um, How do you make Salvo deeply empathetic? So we spent months um, listening to people who face chronic gut conditions and really understanding their their journey, mapping the the things in their life and the ups and downs, because often people have faced uh, chronic gut conditions since they were in their teens, a decade or more, um, without um, over 80% of the people we surveyed said that their conditions might have gotten a little bit better, but not resolved. Um, and still bothering them. So these are really complex journeys. And so we wanted to build a therapeutic alliance and this continuous model so that people would feel kind of emotional support and a relationship with their doctor, a personal health coach, 
but doing that all um, through technology and primarily asynchronously, and that's not that's a new area. I mean, just just like when we took Travelocity um, from hundreds of millions to 11 billion in sales by the time I left. Um, this is a pioneering area. Um, there's early research and evidence, and there's a lot of evidence that, that physicians and health coaches can help people with these conditions, but um, to primarily provide medical care through, through an app and asynchronously, the early evidence is positive, but this is a, this is a, a pioneering area. I'm curious what you think the role of um, awareness is in communication. I mean, you, you worked at a, a social tech company um, I think about folks with um, uh, with IBS and other, other related GI issues as suffering in silence and uh, being stigmatized, um, not wanting to talk about what they're yeah. dealing with. And so I wonder what you feel like communication and awareness, uh, how that plays into this and how Salvo is, is addressing those issues. Well, that's the perfect segue to what we were just discussing about building empathy. Um, one of the things you have to understand about irritable bowel syndrome or IBS is that at one point doctors used to call it hysterical housewife syndrome. Um, and uh, there was this um, way that at that time a kind of um, older male establishment didn't necessarily take the health concerns of women as seriously as the system should. And a, and a lot of people we interview feel like the system doesn't take their concerns seriously. Um, these are not problems that are, quote, in your head. Um, they're real biological challenges. Now, they do involve the brain-gut hypersensitivity um, and there's a lot of research that our clinical advisory board has guided us to around the communication between the microbiome and your gut and the biological neurochemical processes going on in the brain. Um, and that's why uh, gut brain communication and cognitive behavioral therapy and gut directed psychotherapy are all part of the protocols at Salvo Health as part of whole self science. But these are, these are real complex systems and they deserve this kind of. Um, attention. And, and then one of the advantages, in fact, of app-based care for this empathy is that because it can be hard, um, most of the patients in our survey have not even talked to their primary care doctor. Wow. Um, 53% have not talked to their primary care doctor about suffering for years. And when we ask them about it, you know, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, gas, inflammation, these are abdominal pain. These are things that can be uh, awkward to talk about. And so we actually have found um, that the asynchronous model, um, kind of almost Snapchatting with your, your, your doctor, has some advantages and that it can be easier to talk to your health coach or your physician through an app, especially for a lot of young women, um, compared to going in and seeing your, your your primary care physician that you've seen since you were a kid, maybe, um, and trying to talk about some of these stigmatized topics. And then, moreover, um, people who do raise these concerns with their doctors, they, they face a couple of realities that can sometimes make it feel like the system isn't hearing them. One is that your your standard you know primary care physician probably had, you know, one class, if they're lucky, on nutrition or microbiome science in medical school, cognitive behavioral psychology, all these areas, these are not areas that most physicians are, are deeply trained in unless you're one of, a, you know, there's only a couple hundred gut-directed psychotherapy specialists in the entire country. <laughs> so uh, most of the primary care physicians, you know, they, they, they don't have necessarily the time, nor the staff, nor the, the preparation to deal with some of these specialty issues. And then the last pressure is that if they do refer someone to, to a specialist, um, because there's only, as I said, 15,400 board certified GIs in the country, those GIs are under enormous pressure um, to be doing all the colonoscopies and endoscopies. They're incredibly trained surgeons. They're amazing doctors, but they don't, they, there's no, there's little financial incentive for them um, or time, frankly, to help, let's say, a 28-year-old young woman who doesn't present with symptoms of colon cancer, um, but has tons of questions and is calling the office constantly about diet, microbiome, anxiety, all of these, these different questions each day. And the, the offices generally aren't set up to handle that. But that is exactly the kind of member that Salvo Health 
your app-based care is designed to help. So we can talk about how it works, but every day you can have unlimited contact with your team, but there are, there's a health plan, a personalized care plan put together by your doctor. So when you wake up in the morning, here are you know the things, the three things that Dr. Pittman has asked you to do today to deal with your IBS. And there might be some bite-sized content akin to Noom or brain gut exercises that might take five minutes that are right there in the app for you. Um, along with reminders to take either medications or do your labs or um, the medical grade supplements that we often use or, or dietary changes. So it's all easy in an app and there's, there's emotional support with it. One of the things I love about this is that the innovation here uh, isn't necessarily like a new pill. It's a way to package great things that we have known work and make it available to more people um, in a new way. However, I right. also know that there are really innovative ways of dr addressing these issues, uh, exciting uh, new advancements. And I think about, you know, the microbiome and um, it really right. are tapping into some new things that if you're an, an overworked GI doctor, you don't have time for that either, let alone the, the base level day to day conversations you need to have. So I'm wondering, um, are there any, you know, innovative practices that you're really excited about that you'll be able to maybe help people access in the future? Well, we, this is probably a good moment to talk about our clinical advisory board because they're, they're guiding us to the latest research constantly. And so one of the things that's exciting about Salva Health is that we, we went out and we brought together experts from disparate fields. Um, so Salva Health is really about the best of conventional medicine, the best of what's called functional medicine, and the, and the best of sort of behavioral health psychology as well. And those three threads together. And so on our clinical advisory board, you have people like Dr. Mark Hyman, who uh, helped create the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine. You have Mark Pimentel, who um, created the most uh, cutting edge medications like Rifaximin and the IBS Smart Test and leads the Cedar sinai Pimentel Center. Um, it's probably the top, most renowned IBS researcher in the country. You have Professor Emma Mayer, who's uh, created the Brain Gut Microbiome Center at UCLA and has published hundreds of NIH-funded studies. You have uh, Dr. Megan Oser, who led cognitive behavioral psychology for Brigham and Women's and is now a professor at UCLA um, and an expert in gut-directed psychotherapy. And, and, and we have uh, incredible health coach leaders and uh, other researchers, and and so we're we're watching all of the latest developments. But one of the most interesting things is how often, if you catch things early and you get the right diagnosis, relatively low cost interventions um, can be the most effective. And there's a lot of uh, published evidence around this. So one of the interesting examples is a lot of our. Um, our members early on are getting pretty quick relief through a combination of an elimination diet, um, medical grade fiber supplements, or what you know you think of as prebiotics um, to go with probiotics. And the prebiotics are actually more important. The, the experts will tell you, and then um, and then things like peppermint oil, medical grade supplements. And so um, people are astonished that cutting out some of the, the sort of low FODMAP trigger foods are. Um, combined with these steps, after years of pain, they're starting to feel better. And then we move on to some of the, the gut-brain hypersensitivity exercises and some of the cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, you know, obviously, we the key to this is getting the right, diagno right diagnosis, which is why doctors being in charge of the whole process is so important. So if, if you will test for celiac, we'll test for um, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, and um, we'll test for SIBO and things like that. And so depending on your diagnostics, you, you need a very different care plan. Um, on the internet, there's so much misinformation. Um, there are billions of impressions of people talking about gut health and gut talk people have discussed. But a lot of, um, a lot of it isn't coming from doctors or researchers. It's the latest bad diet or crazy crazy pill. Um, and even a lot of these things are, are useful point solutions, but you know, a, there's low FODMAP snack bars, but they don't come with a doctor and a psychologist and a registered dietitian and all the experts to see whether this really applies and is right for your medical history and your condition. That's why the combination of 
a doctor with all of these wraparound services is is so key, and that's that's why we're we're so lucky to have these renowned physicians and researchers guiding this protocol that we call whole self science, which is which is really a philosophy of care that you get to the root cause, you don't simply treat the symptoms, and you you use diverse strategies in a partnership with the patient. Um, the best doctors actually try different things in conjunction with the, the patient. With, with GI, it's not like hypertension, right? The, the patient is telling you that they have abdominal pain or reporting chronic constipation or things like that. And so working, being able to track daily through an app, whether you're adhering, um, a word that the healthcare industry uses, but I don't necessarily love, but whether you're following the doctor's recommendations on diet and exercise and, and medications and supplements, and what kind of daily results you're seeing, that allows the care team to jump in if, if the, the symptoms are not improving in a way that you wouldn't see in a traditional practice. You'd have to schedule an appointment and come back in a few months. But it, within days, if the patient's reporting that, that something, uh, an intervention we're doing is either working or not working, we're gonna factor that into their, their care plan and adjust accordingly. Awesome, awesome. Well, Jeff, I think that's the time that we have. Um, this is so exciting what you're building, and I just know it's going to help uh, a whole lot of people who have, like we said, suffered in silence, have suffered without um, that day-to-day -day care. Maybe they got handed a pamphlet one time about low FODMAP diets, but might not have access to a, to a GI specialist because they're in a rural area. There's so many um, case examples right. of folks who are struggling and will benefit from this. And it's exciting to see you've got this uh, initial seed funding to kind of launch uh, in a bigger way. So I know there's going to be more stories to tell in uh, coming months. Thanks, Logan. Yeah. Really appreciate the chance. To All right. Take care, Jeff. This. Be well. Thanks. A quick word about this show, in case you're new around here. At Startup Health, we believe in broadcasting the stories of health moonshot progress, the stories of the most forward-thinking entrepreneurs in health. If you want more of this good news about healthcare's problem solvers, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button, and follow us on social media at Startup Health.